Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make blender hummus. Uh, I really like hummus and you know one of the reasons I decided to make this video and show you this is I walked into a store the other day and I could not believe they were actually charging what was seven or eight bucks for two cups of hummus, right? And once you know how to make this, it's really fast. Now, I did buy myself a toy, as you might have noticed. This is like a really jacked up blender here. If you've got an ordinary blender, it'll just take a little longer. Um, I wanted to get one of these and see, you know, and if it lives up to its claims, well, I might, you know, drop a few pounds, who knows, right? Anyway, so what you're gonna need are Now the canned chickpeas, okay, um, you'll notice when you get it, it always says um, disodium EDTA. Now this is a preservative, and if you've ever done um, chili, or if you watch my chili video, you know that you definitely want to rinse these first, and I'll show you why. I've got the can open, and as you can see, the liquid doesn't look that appealing. And when you go to rinse it with cold water, you'll notice how these things start to foam up. What's important is you rinse them until they stop foaming before you put them in the blender. Next I'm going to transfer them to uh, the blender container. So that's one and it's looking like it's going to be two cups. Now, if you are going to use this gizmo, as you will have read in the instructions, it's very important not to exceed the max line or you will wreck your machine. And uh, for this kind of stuff, yes, pay attention to the directions. Uh, next thing is measure the tahina. Now, if you've never worked with this stuff, this is stone ground sesame seeds, which turns to sesame butter. But because it's a totally natural product, it will settle. So what you've got to do after you open your... I have a new container here, is get some kind of spatula or a very long spoon and dig into the bottom and pick up the parts that are stuck to the bottom because you'll feel it's very thick like it is with any uh, like natural peanut or almond butter. You can see the chunks off the bottom there. So what you want to do is you want to loosen these up with a spatula first and then give it a good shake before you measure it so it's nice and even, or as good as you can get. So I've measured the tahina and adding it to the blender container here. You might notice that there's a chunk from the bottom, because when I use a brand new jar, and I know it's really liquidy, what I do is I just, uh, to save time, dig up a piece from the bottom and just put it in with some of the liquid mixture, it'll be fine. Uh, you might notice that my lemons today are a lot smaller than I usually use. But keeping in theme with my new toy, I got some organic ones. Uh, so these are a lot smaller. Now, so what you're going to either do is use three small lemons or two large lemons for this. So that's all juice, and I definitely will take a minute to take the seeds out. Even though um, the extractor definitely can chop up the seeds, I just don't like them in there because I find it adds too much of a bitter taste. So the lemon juice is in there. And I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon of sea salt. Sea salt, I find, ends up much saltier in something like this. And you're just using it to accent the flavor. Uh, of course, if you want, you can add more. This thing is so powerful, I don't even bother to um, chop the garlic. What I do is just peel it and give it a quick smash. So once that's all in, just uh, always make sure that your rims are clean. That way there's no leakage. And if you've never seen one of these things go, be prepared to be amazed, all right? Now, so I'm gonna shake it down so it drops down. And uh, let me get a good shot because this is gonna go pretty quick. The nice part about using something this strong is if you want a really coarse hummus, you can. If you want a really fine one, you can. Um, but uh, just take a look. Now what you should do is take a second to shake it up to get the other bits down at the bottom. Yeah, so I'm going to open up this briefly so you can see. Yeah, there's your homeless already. But I do want to even this up a bit. 
So what I'll do is I'll get in there with a the spatula. Now that's looking a little dry to me, so I definitely think I'm going to add a couple of more tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, if you like it this dry, go ahead. I scraped it down a couple of times. That's about as good as it's going to get. As you can see, yeah, that's done. And if there are a couple of chickpeas that somehow manage to survive, you can always just pick them up with a spoon after to not to ruin your presentation. I'll just put this on a plate. Yeah, it's kind of sticky, but this is the real deal. If you can see that, I didn't get a zoom on it yet. This is just as nice as the consistency that you're going to get out of a deli. And the food cost on this, uh, once you portion out the tahini, because the main cost actually is the tahini, so probably I'd peg that at around a dollar. The can of chickpeas was a dollar, and the rest of it, I don't know, maybe 50 cents or a dollar. So you can, you can make this for like three bucks easy, maybe less depending on where you can get it. So there's your finished product. Blender hummus ready, honestly. In a couple of minutes, if I had just done it straight through without taking the time to explain stuff to you, and it really does taste as good as it looks. And if you could do blindfold taste tests with people in a store, they would not be able to tell the difference, and they'd probably even pick this one. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.